let's take a look at a twill fabric. Twill fabrics are characterized by diagonal lines on the face of the cloth formed by the floating or rising of warp yarns over the filling yarns. The twill line is determined by the direction of the diagonal. If the twill line moves from the lower left to the upper right, the twill is a right-hand twill. This weave is also called a Z-twill. If the line moves in the opposite direction, it is a left-hand twill and is sometimes called an S-twill. The angle of the twill is the result of the ratio of warp ends to filling picks. The comparative sizes of the warp and filling yarns will also affect the angle of the twill. Twill lines can be anywhere between 15 and 75 degrees. A 45 degree twill angle is considered a normal twill angle and anything higher is considered a steep twill and lower angles a reclining twill. Twill weaves are designated by what is known as a counter. The counter of a twill designates the order of weaving of the first end of the repeat. The example shown is the simplest of twills, the two by one. It repeats on three ends and three picks. The opposite of a two by one twill is the one by two twill. The two by one twill is a warp faced twill and the one by two is a filling faced twill. These are the same fabric, just opposite sides. In twills, the first number represents the number of warp risers on the first warp end of the repeat. The second number is the number of warp sinkers following the risers on the same warp end. The graph represents a two by one right hand twill. Find the first warp yarn and follow the path of this yarn. It's obvious that there are two warp risers followed by one warp sinker per repeat. Follow the second warp yarn and you can see that the warp sinker is first followed by two warp risers. The final warp yarn in the repeat has a warp riser, a warp sinker, and another warp riser. The pattern is repeated in both the vertical and horizontal directions. This graph represents a 3 by one right-hand twill. As in the 2 by one twill, find the first warp yarn and follow the path of this warp yarn. There are three warp risers followed by one warp sinker per repeat. Follow the second warp yarn and you will see that the warp sinker is first, followed by three warp risers. The third warp yarn has a warp riser, then a warp sinker, then two more warp risers. The final warp yarn in the repeat has two warp risers, a warp sinker, and another warp riser. The pattern is repeated in both the vertical and horizontal directions and repeats on four ends and four picks. As shown, the twill may have a right-hand or left-hand angle to the twill line. The appearance of the twill line can be accentuated or diminished by the direction of yarn twist. Yarn twist direction corresponds to the angle the fibers are twisted to form the yarn. By looking at the fibers in the center of the yarn illustration, one can see that if the letter Z is superimposed on top of the yarn and the twist direction of the fibers matches the center of the letter Z, this yarn is said to have a Z twist. If the letter S matches the direction of yarn twist, then the yarn is said to have an S twist. The table shows the effect of matching the different twill directions with the yarn twist direction. The effect will be a more or less pronounced twill line. For instance, a right-hand twill and Z twist gives the fabric twill line a low ridge or soft twill. A left-hand twill and Z-twist will give a higher ridge on the twill. In addition, the loom backrest or whip roll setting can affect the height of a twill as well. A low backrest will give a softer or lower height, while a high backrest will give a pronounced or higher twill ridge. The graph shows that a 2x2 two two twill repeats on four ends and four picks. Each warp yarn rises over two picks and then sinks under two picks. The 2x2 two two twill is a balanced twill. A simple herringbone or pointed twill can be made by reversing the 2x2 two two twill from a right-hand twill to a left-hand twill. The graph now shows a herringbone twill. Warp ends number 1 through 4 weave as right-hand. On warp end 5, the twill reverses the harnesses so that risers become sinkers and warp ends 6 through 8 step in a left-hand twill direction. Notice that where the twill line reverses, the adjacent ends are in opposing positions of riser and sinker. 
Herringbone weaves are broken twill weaves composed of alternating left and right hand twills to produce the herringbone pattern. This can be accomplished on a dobby loom using a straight draw or by using a herringbone draw on a cam loom to produce the same effect. The chevron is a 2x2 two two twill that is right hand on ends 1 through 4 and the weave reverses to a left hand twill on ends 5 through 8. Notice that ends 4 and 5 form a point at the reversal.